Let's get started on today's notes over solving a system of equations using the elimination method. And this is day one of your notes. So I'm just gonna introduce the elimination method and we're it's gonna be very basic today. When you use the elimination method, you're going to add or subtract equations to eliminate a variable and create one equation with one variable. So I'm gonna get started on this first problem, when to add. And this whole, um, the whole method is based on the fact that if you do something to one side of the equation and you do it to the other, you're never wrong. Okay, so that's, that's the general concept behind this um, method. So when to add. So the first thing you're gonna do is write both equations so that like terms are aligned. So as you can see, both of these equations are written in standard form. This is really the way that I like to um, have my equations when I'm using the elimination method. You can have it in different forms, like slope intercept form, things of that nature, but I tend to like this in um, standard form. And it bodes very well whenever you get into solving systems by matrices, which are not covered in Algebra 1, um, where I am. You'll learn that in Algebra 2. So yes, we have our x's lined up, our y's lined up, we have our equal sign, and then we have our constant. So yes, these equations are lined up. Then we're going to add the equations to eliminate a variable. So I wanna show you one thing. So in this first equation, we have two x plus y equals seven. In the second equation, we have three x minus y equals eight. So right here, I can see, and if you want, you can put a one in front of those variables, I have a positive and a negative of the same amount, okay? My coefficients in front of y are the same but opposite. That's really what you wanna achieve when you're using the elimination method. So right here, that's what I have. So when I add these two equations together, I'm gonna add my x's first. 2x plus 3x is 5x. Then my y's cancel because 1y minus 1y is zero, it goes away. Then seven plus eight is 15. So now what we're gonna do is solve for the value of the variable. So if I'm solving for x, I'm gonna divide by five and I get x equals three. So I get the value of one variable. And now it looks very similar to what the last part of the substitution method looked like. So you've now solved for the value of one variable we're now going to substitute that value into one of the equations to determine the value of the other variable. So we're gonna do exactly what we did at the end of our substitution method. So I can use either one of these equations. I'm just gonna choose the first equation and it doesn't matter which one I use because I'm gonna get the same value for y because this is the point they share. Okay, so 2x plus y equals seven. I'm going to substitute x for three, or three for x. So instead of two times x, it's gonna be two times three plus y equals seven. Two times three is six. And then when I subtract six from both sides, I get that y equals one. And now we're gonna write it as an ordered pair. Our ordered pair is x comma y, which is three comma one. So be careful for those questions that say, what's the x or what's the solution for the x value? Or what's the y solution for this system of equations? So what's the x solution? It's three. What's the y solution? It's one. Okay, let's move on to the next type of problem, when to subtract. So again, we're starting with the same steps, write both equations so that like terms are aligned. And again, I've already got these written in standard form. I've got my x's, my y's, and my equal signs, and my constants. So if you can draw a line through each of your variables and your equal signs and your constants, and it looks like that, then they're lined up. Sometimes you need to move stuff around. Like for example, right here, if this were 3y equals negative 4x plus 2, well, you can add 4x to both sides. So it looks like this, 4x plus 3y equals two, and it looks like that. So sometimes you need to rearrange your equations so that you get them all lined up. So again, in this situation, 
we're lo basically looking for the same but opposite coefficients. So in this situation, when I'm looking at my x's, I see the exact same coefficient. I have a 4 here and I have a 4 here. In my next variable, I have a 2 and a 3, and then constants 8 and 2. Okay, so 4 and 4x and 4x. Well, really what I want is one of them to be negative 4x, so that when I add these two equations, I can eliminate a variable. But what we're going to do, we're going to call this subtraction. And we're going to subtract the equations to eliminate a variable. Now here's how I subtract equations. When you subtract an entire equation, it's the same thing as multiplying that entire equation by negative 1. And I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to multiply the entire equation by negative 1. So what I'm going to do is rewrite it down here. 4x plus 2y equals 8. And then in that second equation, I'm going to multiply every single term by negative 1. And because I'm multiplying every single term on both sides of the equal sign by negative 1, your, your equation is still proportional. So now I've got negative 4x minus 3y equals negative 2. And now I've got a situation that I like whenever I'm using the elimination method. So now when we add these two equations, what happens to those that x variable? It gets eliminated. And now we add our y variables, or the coefficients, 2 and negative 3 is negative 1, y, 8 and negative 2 is positive 6, and I don't want the value of negative y, I want the value of y, so y is negative 6. And now again, we're back to that last step. We solve for the value of one variable. Now we're going to substitute that value into one of the other equations. So I'm just going to substitute it into this first equation up here. So 4 times x plus 2y equals 8. I'm going to replace y with negative 6. Negative 6 equals 8. So 4x, what would that be? Minus 12 equals 8. And now I'm just solving a two-step equation here. What do I do? I'm going to add 12 to both sides. And I get 4x equals 20. Divide both sides by 4. And I'm left with x equals 5. And now let's write our solution as an ordered pair. That would be 5, negative 6. We have four more examples on your notes. So let's go through them. And let's go through them fairly quickly. So right here, I've got both of my equations lined up, my x values, my y values, and my constants and my equal sign is right there. So we're good. Our equations are lined up. What we have here with our y uh, values, the coefficients, I have a positive and a negative of the same amount. That's the perfect scenario. So now let's add. Those are the, that's the variable that's going to be eliminated. 3x plus 4x is 7x. And then 6 plus 22 is 28. When I solve for the x value, I'm going to divide both sides by 7, and I get x equals 4. So now I have the value of one variable. How do I solve for the value of the other variable? I'm going to take an equation, which in this case, I'm just taking that top equation, and I'm going to replace the x value with 4. What is the y value when x is 4? That's what we're finding out here. So 12 plus 2y equals 6. When I subtract 12 from both sides, I'm going to get 2y equals negative 6. And then what do I do at this point? Divide both sides by 2, and I get negative 3. And now let's write our solution as an ordered pair. 4 comma negative 3. And if you need to go back, rewind this video, if I went too fast for you, just pause. Pause throughout the time. Okay, let's look at number two. Number two, now here's our first example where our, um, our equations are not lined up. Okay, this first equation is in standard form. The second equation is not. So now you can rearrange it differently, but I like my equations in standard form when I'm solving using the elimination method. So how would I get this bottom equation in standard form? 
I would subtract y from both sides. So then my equations would look like this. x plus y equals 8, and this would be 12x minus y equals 18. And now we're set up pretty good because as you can see, there's our x, um, our x variables, here's our y variables, and here's our, our constants. And you can see that our y variables are the same, but they're opposite. So when I add these two equations together, what happens to those y variables? They disappear, or the y variable goes away. Now let's add our x values. 1x plus 12x is 13x. And then 18 plus 8 is 26. When I divide both sides by 13, I get x equals 2. Now that I've solved for the x value, I can use that value to determine the y value. So I'm going to use this first equation up here just because it looks the easiest to plug in this value. So instead of x plus y equals 8, I'm going to plug in 2 for x, and I'm going to solve for y. Well, how do I do that? I subtract 2 from both sides, and I get y equals 6. So now let's write it as an ordered pair. 2, 6, x comma y. Let's go to number 3. So number 3. Number 3 is our first example where we do not have like but opposite coefficients. So all of our variables, equal signs, constants, they're all lined up, so that first step is already taken care of. I have a positive 3 and a positive 3. I need one of those to be the opposite. So when I add these two equations together, that variable is eliminated. So I would be subtracting the second equation. How do I subtract? I multiply every single term in that second equation by negative 1. And I'm going to rewrite both of these equations. So 3x plus 4y equals 12. When I rewrite the second equation, I get negative 3x minus 2y equals negative 6. And now I can add these two equations together. What happens to that x variable? It gets eliminated. 4y minus 2y is 2y. 12 minus 6 is 6. When I divide both sides by 2, I get y equals 3. So now I've solved for the value of the y variable. I need to take that value and plug it into one of my equations, which I'm just going to plug it into that top one. 3x plus 4y equals 12. And again, it doesn't matter which one you plug it into. You'll get the same x variable. So 3x plus 4 times what? 4 times 3 equals 12. 3x plus 12 equals 12. And I'm going to solve this all the way through. When I subtract 12, what do I get? 3x equals 0. This does not mean no solution. A lot of students learn that no solution, and then all of a sudden, this means no solution. No. Solve it all the way through. You don't have anything left on the right side of your equation, so put a 0 there. And then divide both sides by 3. And what do you get? x equals 0. So this is not a no solution one. Your x value is 0. Your y value is 3. And how could you check your work in this situation? Plug in 0 for x and 3 for y and see if, it, if it's true for both equations. And it is. Let's go on to our last one, number 4. So here's another example where I have to get everything lined up. So how do I do that? I'm going to add 6x to both sides. And I'm going to rewrite this over here. I get 6x plus y equals 7, and then I get 6x plus y equals 9. Okay, some of you might be able to tell what's going on at this point, but I'm going to solve this using the elimination method, meaning I need the same but opposite coefficients, so I'm going to multiply one entire equation by negative 1, and then in this case, I'm going to multiply that second equation, and here's what I get. Okay, so first we rewrote it, second we multiplied by negative 1, and now we're going to follow the elimination method by adding both of these equations. What happens to the x values? 
They cancel. What happens to the y values? They cancel. What's 7 plus negative 9? Negative 2. So I have nothing on the left equals negative 2. When you eliminate your variables and you end up with a statement that is not true, does 0 equal negative 2? No, it does not. This is an example of a problem that has no solution. And that concludes your notes over solving using the elimination method day one. I hope it was helpful.